Welcome to our anatomy lecture on the foot and ankle. So this is the bones of the foot that we'll be responsible for knowing. Um, we aren't going to necessarily go through every single bone. Um, we will go through the things that are important to know in the palpation section of the labs. Um, but we do have three groups of bones. We have the phalanges, which are your toes. The metatarsal bones, which create the long part of your foot. And then we have the tarsal bones at the end, which generally create the ankle joint. Now for arches of the foot, there are four that we need to know about. The first is the metatarsal arch, and this is shaped by the distal heads of metatarsals one through five. So metatarsal one is under the big toe, all the way to five under the pinky toe. And the distal heads are farthest away from the ankle. So heads being out here, faces being down here. The second arch is the transverse arch. Okay, and it comes along that first distal row of tarsal bones. It forms a half dome and it gives protection to soft tissues as well as increasing the foot's mobility. Now, when we talk about arches, most people are most familiar with this one. This is the medial longitudinal arch. It's formed by the bones on the medial side of the foot. It's held together by a spring ligament. Okay. Its name is actually called the plantar calcaneonavicular ligament. That sounds like a mouthful, but plantar means it's on the bottom of the foot. Calcaneonavicular means it runs from the calcaneus to the navicular bone, so it's right in through here. Now, it's called the spring ligament because it acts as a spring, and it returns the arch to normal position after it's been stretched. Okay. This is also supported by the long tendon of tibialis posterior. Now the last arch of the foot is the lateral longitudinal arch. It's on the lateral aspect and follows the same pattern. It's supported by the bones on the lateral aspect of the foot, but it is much lower and less flexible than the medial arch. Now we come to articulations or joints, and this is generally where um, therapists have uh, most of their knowledge because most of the injuries that occur in sport occur to joints. So there are several different joints and we'll walk through each one of them. The first one are the interphalangeal joints. So these are the joints in your toes. The big toe has one interphalangeal joint. The other four toes have two. The one that's furthest away from the ankle is called the distal interphalangeal joint, or the DIP. The one that is closer to the ankle joint is called the proximal interphalangeal joint, or the PIP. Okay. The next row of joints is the metatarsal phalangeal joints. So these run from the metatarsal to the ph uh, phalange. They are numbered one through five, one being the big toe, five being the pinky. Now between the metatarsals, we do have joints. There are ligaments that hold all of the heads and bases together, and then there's an interosseous membrane that runs in the middle. Okay, I'm not going to ask you to know the individual parts of them, but simply that there are joints in there and they can be damaged when we have forces to the foot. Okay, so these would be your intermetatarsal joints. This next arrow points to our metatars or tarsometatarsal joints. So this is from your distal bone of tarsals to your metatarsals. Again, we have ligaments that are on the dorsal and plantar surfaces that run and hold all of these together. The next arrow here symbolizes the um, joints that are mid-tarsal. So we have two. One is from the talus to the navicular, and the second is from the calcaneus to the cuboid. So right in through here, you're going to have the mid-tarsal joints. And the last ones are the joints that we consider the ankle joint. There are actually two joints that make up the ankle joint. The first one is right here. This is the talocural joint. It's made up of the talus and the malleoli of the tibia and the fibula. Okay. This joint is a hinge joint. It allows for movements of flexion and extension. In the ankle, we call it plantar flexion, which is pointing your toes, and dorsiflexion, which is pulling them up. This joint is very, very stable when it's flexed, when it's in dorsiflexion, and that's because the tibia and the fibula create a cube shape at the bottom, and the talus fits very nicely into that space. The second joint of the ankle 
is the subtalar joint. So this is the joint below the talus, between the talus and the calcaneus. At this joint, we have inversion, which is moving the bottom of the foot into the midline, and eversion, which is moving the bottom of the foot out away from the body. So these are the two joints that make up our ankle joint. And the thing to remember is that in all of these joints, we are going to have ligaments that hold them together. Any of those ligaments can be sprained and damaged when we have forces to the foot. These are the bones of the leg. We have the tibia and we have the fibula. Now we will cover in lab the specific bony landmarks that you need to know on these bones. Um, so I won't go into too much more detail than that, other than to know that we do have a tibia and a fibula. And in between the two is an interosseous membrane that holds them together and again can be injured. Now on the outside of the ankle we have ligaments that hold everything together. The ones we need to be concerned about are these three here. Okay. So we have the anterior talofibular ligament. Anterior means on the front side of the body. Talofibular means it runs from the talus to the fibula. It's actually the most commonly sprained uh, ligament in the whole body. At the bottom we have the calcaneofibular ligament. So it runs from the calcaneus to the fibula. And at the back we have the posterior talofibular running from the talus to the fibula on the back side. On the medial side, we have the deltoid ligament. It has several components, but we simply call it the deltoid ligament. And it does attach the tibia to the calcaneus, the talus, and the navicular. It is a much stronger ligament on the medial side. Blood supply of the foot, we have the arteries in red and the veins in blue. I'm not going to ask you to name them or know them specifically, other than to generally know where they run, so that if you have injury to the foot, you might know what could have been damaged. The other thing I want you to know is that right in this area, in the front medial side of the foot, is where you find the pedal pulse. So if you need to check the pulse of the foot, this is where you're going to find it. Nerve supply of the foot. Again, I'm not going to ask you to be able to identify each one of them. I simply want you to know generally where they run. Again, so that if you had injury in the area, you would know what to be looking for. Then we get into muscles. The muscles of the foot are divided into different groups. We have brevis muscles, which just means short. So these are generally muscles that are located just within the foot. Longest muscles you are going to see as tendons in the foot because the muscle is actually located in the lower leg. The other muscles we have in the foot are in this diagram down here. The plantar muscles and the dorsal muscles. And there is a rule of thumb for these muscles. It is that plantar muscles adduct, so they bring the toes together. And so they're called pad, P-A-D muscles. Dorsal muscles abduct, so they take the toes apart, so they are called dab muscles. That is honestly as complicated as we will get for the muscles of the foot. When it comes to the muscles of the leg, again, we are going to identify these in lab, um, and so you will know which ones are important to know. These are the muscles on the anterior side. We have the muscles on the posterior side. And then we have the muscles on the lateral side. Now one thing to be aware of the muscles on the lateral side is that some people call these muscles the fibularis muscles because they're next to the fibula. Some people call them by their older name the peroneal muscles. Okay? They are still the same muscles and longus is the same, brevis is the same, tertius is the same. It's simply that some people call them fibularis and some people call them peroneals. This is a balance of leg muscles, and why I show you this is twofold. The first is to show you how many muscles that are located on the back side of our legs. So this becomes important when we get into our discussion on shin splints. The other is to show you the four components of muscles that are in the leg. So we have the anterior compartment muscles here, we have the lateral compartment muscles here, and then we have two in the posterior. We have the soleus and gastrocnemius, which are the superficial component, and then we have the deep posterior component in the middle of the leg.
Now movements of the uh, ankle. We have dorsiflexion, which is bringing the foot up into a 90 degree bend at the ankle. Plantar flexion is pointing the toes. And both of these, these movements occur at the talocural joint. Inversion is paired with adduction and supination. All of those together create the movement which is like spraining your ankle. And it is where the bottom of the foot is now uh, pointed to the midline of the body. Eversion, abduction, and pronation are also paired. And this is the movement where the bottom of the foot is now pointed to the outside of the body. We have flexion and extension of the toes, and we have ab and adduction of the toes. The last couple of things to cover, this is the plantar fascia. Plantar fascia is actually continuous with your Achilles tendon. So your Achilles tendon is going to come down the back of the leg, and then it's going to fan out as the plantar fascia. The plantar fascia is very important. Anybody who's ever had plantar fasciitis um, or who's a long distance runner would be able to tell you all about it. But it's a thick white band of fibrous tissue, comes, starts at the medial tuberosity of the calcaneus and extends all the way out to the proximal heads of the metatarsals. And along with ligaments, this supports the foot against downward forces. So the last slide here is palpation. Again, we will go through palpation in lab so that you're aware of how you find these on the body. But these are some of the things that you should know coming into class because they're some of the things we will talk about with the different injuries. <laughs>